Hey friends, it's Robin. Welcome back to my channel. I'm going to apologize in advance if you can hear my dog huffing and puffing. For whatever reason, she has decided that she needs to be in this room with me today. But I am going to be talking about another 10 books that I finished semi-recently. I've been a reading machine lately. So there might be a few of these coming this month, but I have another 10 books to talk about. Most of these ended up being queer KU books. I deviated from my TBR a little bit in June. June is actually like the worst I think I've like ever done with my TBR. I, I only read like half of my TBR. Usually I only miss like one or two books, but June ended up being a bit of a ride. So Let's just get into the books that I finished recently. First up was Infuriating by Anli James. This is book four in the Elite Protective Services series, and the series is all MM bodyguard romances. And in this last one, we are following the, like, CEO, I guess, of the Elite Protection Services. He is ex-military, and he started this entire bodyguard company, I guess. And this one was really cute. Book one is still my favorite. I liked book one the most, and then I think it was this one too, and then I didn't particularly love book three. But in this one, our our other hero, he is a um, like online sex worker, and he ends up witnessing a murder. And he calls the police and says, hey, I witnessed this murder. And he doesn't have any money. Like he is not like in the other books, the people that were hiring the bodyguards were very rich and wealthy. This kid is not. And so our other hero ends up doing this pro bono and saying like, you know, I'll help protect you while you're under investigation or while not he's under investigation, but like while at risk of <laughs> coming under attack for witnessing this murder, you end up learning how he is tied to this murder. And obviously the two of them fall in love. I really liked the plot of this one. I really liked the romance. This is just, it's a really fun series overall. But like I said, this was my second favorite of the entire series. I give it four stars. Highly recommend. This is Anli James's first series that she ever wrote. So I will say that I don't love this series quite as much as her Necessary Evil series but it is still a really fun good time. After that I did read the final novella which was satisfying and this one I gave two and a half stars. This one's only like 40 pages and it's super insta-lovey and you are following the brother of the love interest in book three which is my least favorite book and I didn't really care for him in here. There, you are also following him with Calder and I'm still a little salty that we got a Calder romance and not the programmer, what was his name? Wes? I think that was his name because he was way more interesting than Calder, but I just, I didn't particularly care for this one. It's kind of like a holiday-esque romance. It's super insta-lovey. Essentially these two characters are at a holiday party and they get really drunk and they get married and then they wake up and it is them staying married. Like, it, it was fine. It didn't do anything for me, so I, I gave it two and a half stars. After that, I went into Enemies of the State by Tal Bauer. I am in a group chat over on Instagram with Mariah and Steph. I will link them both down below. But we have been on a bit of a Tal Bauer binge. <laughs> they are both, like, already Tal Bauer stands, and I, after reading You and Me, we got into a group chat and started talking about Tal Bauer. And so... They convinced me to go right into the Enemies of the State series, and I'm utterly obsessed. I love this series so, so much. This is a romance between the president and his lead Secret Service agent, and it is a, like, forbidden romance, and it is one of the most precious things in the entire world. It's also very intense. This series, I swear to, I swear my blood pressure skyrockets while I read this. It's taking place, like, right now, but it was written in 2016, and Tal Bauer is some sort of, like, fortune teller because... He got a lot of stuff right, but we are following the president as he is navigating this hostile group that is infiltrating the White House and politics and things like that, and they're trying to overthrow the U.S. and cause chaos and kind of set the world into war, and they are trying to fight back against this group of people that they don't even know, like, who is all a part of, and it is kind of leading them towards nearly a third world war, and... It's very intense. 
very action-packed. It is mixed with the cutest romance ever. These two are so precious and need to be protected at all costs. I love Jack and Ethan so much. There's also a ton of like little side romances in here and I just, I am completely obsessed with this series. And in fact, after reading this, I immediately went into the novella directly after this one called Interlude. It is another holiday novella, weirdly enough. This one didn't have a ton to do with the holidays either, but it does take place over like the Thanksgiving through New Year's time. And you are just kind of getting some of this story, but from Ethan's perspective while he is gone. And it was very good. I gave this one five stars as well. I just, I love these characters so much. This is another one of those series, I talk about this occasionally, where it doesn't matter what these characters are doing. I will read it because I just am so attached to these characters. So I gave this one five stars as well. I have also since read the next book and I have downloaded book three. So I am just... I am flying through Talbauer's entire backlist right now. So next is a book I'm not going to talk about much because I have multiple videos now where I talk about this book, but I picked up Wicked Beauty by Katie Roberts and I give this two stars. I have an entire video dedicated to this book, which I will link up in the cards and down in the description box, but I did not like this. I'm just going to leave it at that because like I said, I have an entire like half hour video dedicated to me going through everything that I didn't like about this book. So I'm not going to rehash it here. No one. No one wants to listen to it again. After that, I read Free to Love by Kennedy Ryan. This was a short story that she put up for free, I think at like Book Funnel. It was available through like her Instagram and website and stuff like that. It is just this really short novella that takes place, I think either like the day before, the day before and like into Juneteenth. And this was so good. I love, I love Kennedy Ryan's writing. I gave this four stars. It's only like, 40 pages. Like it's super short, but you are following this couple. They are engaged. They kind of have this like disagreement at the beginning of the book and it is just them going through that disagreement over their wedding and working through some of their stuff and then the cutest, the cutest wedding ceremony at the end. This is one of those novellas where it's just like it's just a little, a little glimpse into their life. It's just this little cut out day or so, 24 hour period, where you get to peek in on these people's lives. And it was so cute. Kennedy Ryan's writing is just fantastic. It is absolutely fantastic. And I love this cover. One, this cover is stunning for like a tiny little short story. Kennedy Ryan's covers are always so beautiful, but yeah, I loved this. It was really, really good. I don't know if it is still available for free or not, but if you want another Kennedy Ryan novella, I highly recommend this one. It's just fun and short and sweet. After that, I read Red Dirt Heart 2 by N.R. Walker, and this is the second book in her Red Dirt Heart series, and this series follows two guys who are now working in the Australian Outback. One is from Texas, and the other owns the ranch and it is their romance and this series is just so cute. I gave this one four stars. I gave book one four stars. The entire series is following the same couple and they're all pretty short. They're only like 200 pages and you're just kind of watching these guys work through all of the things that comes along with their careers. In this one, the main conflict is our hero from Texas realizes that his visa is about to expire and he is being kicked out of the country, only he obviously doesn't want to because he is in a new relationship with this other guy. And the two of them are struggling with their communication at that same time. And so they kind of get into this big argument at the beginning over their lack of communication, only to discover that one of our heroes is about to be deported, and it is them trying to work through their communication blocks as well as make sure that the other hero can stay in the country. And it was really cute. I just, again, I really like these characters. I love this setting. I have a really good time with this series. Definitely going to continue on with the series. I'm really, really enjoying it. After that, I read A Thousand Miles by Bridget Morrissey, and I gave this one three stars. I, if you watched my unhaul video, which I'll link in the cards in the description box. I am unhauling this book. I haven't taken the books in yet, so I'm holding it up here for the last time. But this was totally fine. Like, I have no problems with this book. This is just one of those books that, like, I'm not gonna think about again. It was just a fine contemporary romance. 
Like I said, I gave it three stars. You're following these two people who are, I think they're in their like mid 20s and they were best friends in high school. And during a road trip, something happens and they end up losing contact after that for 10 years. At their like 10 year anniversary of their road trip, they had always agreed to go back and open up a time capsule that they buried. And our hero has recently learned a dark secret about his identity. And he ends up showing up at our heroine's doorstep, even though they haven't spoken in 10 years, to go take the road trip and open up their time capsule, just like they promised each other. And it is them reconnecting over this road trip. It's a fun road trip romance. Road trip romances in general aren't my favorite, but I do love a good friends to lovers romance. So I wanted to give this one a try. The road trip didn't do anything for me. I Part of my issue with road trip romances is I don't like travel things in general. I don't like following characters as they're just like going from place to place. I don't like it in fantasy. <laughs> I don't like it in romance. And I wanted to give it a try again. To, I always like to give tropes even if I'm like, I, this isn't my favorite trope. I always want to give them a try because there are always exceptions to those rules. And unfortunately this one just, it didn't do anything for me. I don't like the whole like, oh we stopped here to look at this touristy thing and it just didn't do much for me. I also didn't think that the romance progressed in a way that I particularly liked or believed or anything like that. It was just, it was fine. I have nothing, nothing bad to say about this book. It just didn't do anything spectacular for me. And it's just not a romance I'm gonna think about again. After that, I read The Kite by N.R. Walker, and I unfortunately gave this one like two and a half, three stars. This book was fine, but this is one of those books, like going in, I knew that this was gonna require some sort of suspension of belief, and unfortunately it required a little too much. And on top of that, the romance itself was quite disappointing. So I love N.R. Walker as an author in general, which is why I was very excited for this book. And this is a romantic suspense, enemies to lovers romance. And I love all those things. But in this book, we are following these two assassins. And these two assassins have kind of been like, I don't want to say on the run, but they've been lone wolves their whole life. And now they discover that they have hits out for them and they end up teaming up to try and figure out who's behind wanting them dead and trying to get out of that situation. And it is them traveling across Europe. I didn't know, I didn't know that they were going to be traveling all over. Like I said, they go, they go from like Europe into Africa and then the Middle East. And so like you get lots of lots of traveling. It was like <laughs> the plot itself was fun. It was ridiculous. And like I said, you have to suspend your belief for this entire book because there are just so many ridiculous assassin situations that come up and the politics and stuff are outrageous and ridiculous. But my big complaint with this book is the romance in here left so much to be desired. I can get over a ridiculous plot as long as the romance elements are good. And unfortunately, the romance in here was kind of a mess. It was a mess. I didn't believe in their chemistry. There was no romantic buildup. Like the pacing made no sense. Like there was no point where they were like starting to thaw to each other and like girl feelings. It was just like they had hate sex once and then suddenly they were together. And like that was it. And but they still like didn't get along. And I was like, why do you like each other? Like, I, I don't get it. I at no point believed that they cared about each other in any way. <laughs> and because of that, I just, like I said, it, it didn't make up for the kind of ridiculous plot. I had a fine time reading this. It just, at the end, I was like, that wasn't a great book. <laughs> but ending on a positive note, we have The Dead Romantics by Ashley Poston. And this was one of my most anticipated books of the year. And I think this was a five star prediction. And I gave this five stars. I loved this book so much. If you have seen the movie Just Like Heaven, that is, that's what this book is with Reese Witherspoon and Mark Ruffalo. Let me know if you've seen that movie because this is essentially a gender bent Just Like Heaven and that's all I could think about like the whole time. This was so so good. We are following our heroine who's a ghostwriter and she writes these romances for a very very famous writer and right at the beginning of the book she has to go to her new publisher because she is supposed to be submitting her latest book, only she hasn't written anything yet, because she 
has intense writer's block after a really, really devastating breakup, and she doesn't know how to write a happy ending. And so she goes to meet her new publisher and tries to ask for an extension, and he turns her down. They do have great chemistry, though, at this first meeting, and they kind of go their separate ways, and her father suddenly passes away, and she has to leave and go back home to her family's funeral parlor. And this has a really slight magical element, which I love in my romances, but our heroine and her father could see ghosts, and the town doesn't really believe her, and her family, like, kind of believes her. But when she is there, she sees the ghost of her new editor, and she is very confused because she's like, I just, I just saw him. Why is his ghost here? And he kind of keeps showing up and following her around, and the two of them get closer, and <laughs> you're watching her family kind of grieve the loss of her father while she is trying to work through her emotions and possibly finally write the ending to the romance that's due while trying to figure out what happened to her editor and why he is continuously showing up in her life. And it is so, so good. I just, I loved this. Like I said, this is just very similar to Just Like Heaven crossed with book lovers. Like that's what this is. It is just like have been mixed with books, book lovers and you got the dead romantics. <laughs> and it was so good. I just, I love this book. I want everyone to read this book. I cried, but I cry in everything. So take that with a grain of salt. <laughs> but I just, I loved this so, so much. So five out of five stars, highly recommend. All right, that is it for my recent reads. That is all 10 books I've read recently. Let me know if you have read any of these, if any of these are on your TBR, and I will catch you all in my next video. Bye.